To put it mildly, Harley Quinn's relationship with the Joker has been fraught. But as she's evolved over the years, Harley has become so much more than a victim. Here's a look at the colorful and complicated relationship between the Joker and Harley Quinn. She's one of DC's most famous characters today, but Harley Quinn was never meant to be such a big deal. The Joker's crazy and love sidekick was created to fill a small role in Joker's gang, in Joker's Favor, a 1992 episode of Batman the Animated Series. Writer-producer Paul Dini came up with Quinn's persona when he saw actress Arlene Sorkin in an episode of long-running soap opera Days of Our Lives and took some inspiration for his new hench girl character. Surely thou remembers me. I am Calliope the Court Jester. I performed at the night of the Round Table Bar and Grill just a fortnight ago. Harley was also clearly inspired by the various henchwomen on the 1966 Batman TV show, and you can see other parallels in her debut episode. Quinn wears multiple disguises and sets off a 60s style paralyzing gas bomb during a testimonial dinner for Commissioner Gordon at the Joker's behest. She's also clearly smitten with the Joker from day one, and the little interactions between the two really struck a chord with viewers. Before long, the showrunners knew that they had a potential hit on their hands. Quinn was featured in more episodes and became the Joker's love interest, something that Dini and his co-creator, artist Bruce Timm, were initially wary of because they didn't want a romance to detract from the Joker's sinister creepiness. Ironically, Quinn's introduction would ultimately propel the Joker to all new levels of creep. After featuring her in a handful of episodes of Batman the Animated Series, Deanie found himself wanting to know more about Harley Quinn. Viewers were responding well to Harley, and Deanie soon realized that she needed a backstory worthy of the hype. After deciding who she was behind her mask and where she came from, the show began to hint at a much deeper backstory. Look, Bats, when I was a doctor, I was always listening to other people's problems. Then I met Mr. J, who listened to me for a change. Fans got the full lowdown on the origin of Harley Quinn and the Joker's relationship in 1993 when the one-shot The Batman Adventures Mad Love was released to critical acclaim. Deanie and Tim's Eisner award-winning comic, which was set in the TV show's continuity, revealed exactly how Quinn became the Joker's girlfriend. In it, an ambitious psychiatrist named Dr. Harleen Quinzel takes a job at the notorious Arkham Asylum, where the Joker is being held. She tries to help him, but it's the clown prince of crime who ends up getting inside her head. After the Joker escapes Arkham and is apprehended by Batman, a head-over-heels Quinzel transforms herself into a jester-like villain and stages a breakout. With that, Harley Quinn was born, and so was her abusive, manipulative relationship with the Joker. In 1999, Mad Love was adapted virtually shot for shot into an episode of the animated series, and later that year, Harley Quinn would be formally added to the mainstream DC Universe in a self-titled comic with her own series following shortly after in 2001. When DC revamped its entire line of comics in 2011 with an all-new universe as the New 52, the origin of the Joker and Harley Quinn's toxic relationship went through a few changes. The alteration might seem subtle on the surface, but for many Harley Quinn fans, the New 52 version of the character was totally different at the core. In Dini and Tim's original Mad Love, Harley falls in love with the Joker during their therapy sessions, and while the Joker does manipulate her feelings for him, she joins his ranks willingly. That's not the case in the New 52. In the updated origin story, the Joker pushes Quinzel into a vat full of the same chemical that bleached his skin white and turned him insane, and he does so against her will. For many, this fundamentally changed who Harley Quinn was as a character, altering her agency and the whole nature of her relationship with the Joker. David Ayer's Suicide Squad film featured a mix of both origins, with Margot Robbie's Quinzel taking an oath to the Joker and jumping into the vat herself, but only after being manipulated and literally having her brain jolted with electroshock therapy. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna kill me, Mr. J? What? Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. The Joker's relationship with Harley Quinn has been both physically and emotionally abusive from the very beginning. The clown prince of crime routinely lashed out at Quinn in Batman the Animated Series, often with acts of violence that were particularly shocking for a show primarily aimed at children. The animated Mad Love in particular can be difficult to watch due to its vicious portrayal of the Joker's abuse. 
There are a few instances where the violence is played for slapstick comedy, like a lingerie-wearing Harley getting shoved off a desk and cartoonishly kicked out in the beginning. As the show goes on, though, it turns much more serious, and when Harley commits the ultimate sin of nearly killing Batman herself in an effort to impress the Joker, his response is presented as horrifyingly realistic, consequences that we rarely see in cartoons. The message is clear. If Harley was just a funny side character at the beginning, she's something very different once we know her story. Quinn got a new, more revealing look for popular 2009 video game Batman Arkham Asylum, but her relationship with the Joker stayed the same. In fact, the idea that the Joker is Quinn's abuser was drilled home during the game's dialogue by none other than the Joker himself. In the Joker's party cutscene, the villain casually refers to his physical abuse of Harley as a hobby beating up Bane, feeding Scarecrow to Croc, slapping around Harley, my hobby by the way. The Joker often gets upsettingly physical with Harley Quinn in the comics. He's done everything from pistol whipping her to kicking her in the face, but from time to time he goes one step further and actually tries to end her life. Harley's first mainstream DC Universe appearance, for example, came in the 1999 one-shot Batman Harley Quinn, written by the character's co-creator Paul Dini. In that story, the Joker tries to off his girlfriend with the over-the-top method of launching her into space in a rocket. The thing is, it's not because she's too overbearing, but because he's becoming too attached to her for his liking. The very idea of having affection for someone is so off-putting to the Clown Prince of Crime that he decides to end it permanently. Sadly, things haven't gotten any better for Harley since then. They've only gotten more varied. The 2016 Suicide Squad film was a highly divisive movie pulling in just shy of $750 million at the worldwide box office despite the fact that the vast majority of critics trashed it. If there was one thing that everyone could agree on, though, it was that Margot Robbie stole the show as Harley Quinn. Fears that the character was going to become a punching bag for Jared Leto's Joker turned out to be largely unfounded, although it took a last-minute change of heart from the studio. It seems as though Warner Brothers got wise to a possible backlash and decided to make the Joker's relationship with his girlfriend a little less abusive. According to Leto, the studio cut so many Joker scenes out of Suicide Squad that they could have stitched them all up in a separate Joker movie. When the scenes leaked online, the reason for leaving them on the cutting room floor eventually became abundantly clear. They were way too violent for what was ultimately a PG-13 movie, especially where Joker and Harley were concerned. In addition to what was left out entirely, the crazy couple's big helicopter rescue scene was reportedly reshot. In the final cut, Quinn falls from the chopper after it gets hit, but reports suggest that the Joker tossed Quinn out of the moving helicopter during a heated argument in the original cut. Most versions of Harley Quinn are dangerously obsessed with their respective versions of the Joker, but the Cupid of Crime has actually been involved with a number of other characters in her relatively short history. Quinn had a thing going with her Suicide Squad teammate Deadshot at one stage, something that was hinted at through their connection in the live-action movie. Things got super weird between the two in the seventh issue of the New 52 Suicide Squad, when Quinn tied the sharpshooter to a chair and draped Joker's actual severed face, which the Joker had removed himself from his own skull because, you know, he's the Joker, over Deadshot's face for a little therapeutic role-playing. Things got pretty dark, but you probably already guessed that from hearing about the Joker's severed face. Harley's relationship with Poison Ivy is a lot more uplifting. Fans started wondering if there might be some romantic feelings between them way back in the 1990s. Ivy was always critical of Quinn's toxic relationship with the Joker in Batman the Animated Series. And in the years that followed, their own relationship blossomed. DC confirmed that they were girlfriends without the jealousy of monogamy in a 2015 tweet, and in 2017's Harley Quinn number 25, they shared their first main universe kiss. In fact, 2017 was a pretty busy year for Quinn in terms of her love life. She got a smooch from both the Green Lantern and interstellar tough guy Lobo in the spin-off series appropriately titled Harley's Little Black Book, and the animated version of the character climbed into bed with Bat family member Nightwing, much to the Dark Knight's disapproval. Their steamy scene in the animated feature film Batman and Harley Quinn left many fans, and Batman himself, in shock. Would Harley Quinn be able to have a normal relationship with the Joker if he wasn't completely deranged? That question was answered in Batman White Knight, a limited series from DC's Black Label line in which she got the love story she always wanted with the Joker. Beginning in 2017, writer-artist Sean Murphy's eight-issue comic features a sane version of the Joker cured by a miracle drug. His real name, it turns out, is Jack Napier, and he's hell-bent on redemption which he seeks out by running for city council and even turning against Gotham's other villains. 
It's not just Gotham's forgiveness that he's after, however. The repentant villain also wants to make amends with his former lover, and he gets down on one knee to prove it. The only problem is that this Harley isn't actually Harley after all. After the Joker went too far by torturing Robin, Harley left him only to be replaced with an all-new, all-different Harley Quinn named Marion Drews, and he forgot all about it. Fake Harley freaks out at the marriage proposal and attacks Napier, but the actual Harley, dressed in her classic red and black getup, as opposed to Marion's more movie-style gear, shows up and rescues him, kicking her doppelganger in the head for good measure. Romantic, right? With Jack cured, Harley gets her long-awaited romance. Oh, and in case you were wondering, Marion Drews is actually a reference to Mary Andrew, an archaic name for a clown, which means it's actually a worse pun than the Harley Quinn take on Harlequin. The movie Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn drove home the idea that Harley Quinn is done with the Joker. It seems as though there were plans to show their breakup on screen at one stage. Leaked set photos showed the villain being kicked to the curb during the filming of one scene that presumably would have been at the start of the movie, but Jared Leto's Joker didn't even appear outside of a brief animated sequence. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. Yeah. When she sat down for an interview with Empire Magazine in December 2019, Margot Robbie revealed that Quinn would be free to be who she wants to be in her second movie appearance, but independence doesn't come easy to her. According to Robbie, she's applying a more complex take on the breakup than the neat, tidy ending that some viewers may have wanted. So, is the movie version of Harley Quinn fully over the Joker? Well, maybe, but it might take a few more movies to get all that puddin' out of her system. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite characters are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.